<laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I just thought I'd give you a little job at a hut laugh to get your day started right. Oh, you're all steamed up here. Hmm. I don't know why you're steamed up. It's only like 95 degrees with about 100% humidity. It's not bad. Sunny Florida. Oh, you gotta love it. What's going on over here? Oh, yeah. We're gonna plug in a little device here. Get this device plugged in. Yeah, yeah. We gotta work some bees today, guys. I'm getting low on my syrup here. So I've got two little dollar store buckets here. Hot, hot of water as I can take off of a tap. Now I gotta go get some sugar. I keep that in the other barn. And if you keep, if you get a metal bucket, and get one of these contractor bags. I use these things for everything. See, I've got pine needles I put in it and everything. And uh, I had quite a carpenter ant issue. You see this little device here? This little, it's got liquid in it, poison. And there's a little wick here. Apparently they can come up and suck a little of that on the top. But what I had, these things are clever. They were walking, they're coming in on this electrical line, coming down and in. And I sprayed that with raid, that rag. All I did was take a paper towel and I duct taped it to make a wick and I sprayed it heavily with uh, raid ant and roach killer. And it worked kind of, kind of, yeah. So, but then I put this this in. I bought a pack of these things. There was four of them in a pack. I've only used one so far. It's, it's uh, called Hot Shot. See, you got them in this, these little packs here. I can quit playing dropsies here. Uh, yeah, it says here, lick, Ultra Liquid Ant Bait and it goes through and tells you all the critters it will take out and carpenter ants is one of them and since i put that thing down here uh bingo i haven't had it i'm going to take one of these and put i've got a some some problems child's over there on the other site i have them cooking them with a blowtorch and i'm going to put one of those under each one of those blocks out there and maybe uh concrete blocks where it'd be kind of you know, hid from the rain and stuff, and see how it works over there on the other job site. Uh, these dollar store buckets, right up to this line right here, I filled it up and it's 10 pounds of sugar. I dumped a 10 pound bag of sugar and it came right to here. So that's just how I do it. Uh, normally I use like three buckets of water and but i had i had about a, a bucket of water and, and syrup already in the bottom so i'm doing two buckets of water and two buckets of sugar and we'll let this mix and today when i was going around putting out my jars the other day i noticed a couple of die outs for whatever reason so we got to get in there and see what's going on and uh, salvage that equipment and hopefully we'll go around and rob out some more resources and make up some five framers and throw on my truck and take to the other my other job site yeah guys i keep my stuff stored in this little can here and this is this will hold 100 pounds right up to the top here i don't know what i don't know how many gallons this can is but see i've lined it with a contractor's bag and this keeps your sugar so nice. I mean, I've had some few ant problems with it. And I took the powdered borax, uh, the borax powder and went around it, and that helped a little bit. But I haven't had any issues with ants since quite a while since I've done that. 
but see, I just take a really your metal metal feed scoop like this, nice heavy duty one. And uh, see, it keeps my sugar so nice and dry. You don't want to take bag. I did it one year. I put bags, stack bags all over this floor. And that sucked that moisture in those bags. And I had rock hard sugar. And I'll tell you what, you get that stuff rock hard. And even the hottest water is, uh, you know, it. See, well, there's there's a couple ants right there. They're the little sugar, them red sugar ants. So I got to put up some more stuff. But two scoops with this scoop, big scoop is right at 10 pounds. So this will take care of all my needs today. Uh, sugar feeding needs today. When we take these other beasts to that other site, we're going to have to uh, feed them. Yeah, guys, this is a fantastic way to to uh, mix your sugar syrup. You just kind of slowly run it in. I don't know. I don't know, guys, the uh, gallons per minute that submersible pump is. But it's got a three-quarter outlet on it, so you go by that. Now, if you got sugar still in your pail, just drop it in the liquid here, squish it around, and then I usually throw it over here in the sink so I can rinse it off. And that's pretty warm water in there, guys. That's the hottest water I could get off the tap. So keep that in mind. And on this mixed tank here, this valve, I discovered, wasn't necessary at all. I thought I needed back pressure. I thought I needed more back pressure. So I put this in, but it's wide open. You don't need back pressure, and I'll show you in a second. See, this comes up, the pump comes up through here and, and comes to here for this, my, my valve here. And I'll show you how fast it comes off of there. Let me get a jar here. When I bring these in, I just sit right here on this pail right here. Now I'm nice working height. Uh, I was gonna put this up on a stand and all that where I could stand up and do it, but I find this is super comfortable sitting on a bucket. And nothing's teeter-tottering around up in the air. So you can see how simple this setup is. And when I bring in, I usually just, when I'm walking around in the field, I'm usually just putting in uh, four buckets, uh, four ball jars in one bucket and carrying them around like that. See, I've already got a bee coming in here wanting to, they're hungry out there. Things are slowing down a little bit, but uh, they always seem to be hungry around here. So you can see the pressure here. And you see how fast it fills. So I just put them into my bucket. I go out and change them out. Then I come back, pull the empty ones off the hives, bring them in here. I take them right to my sink. Because I've only put one small hole, about an eighth inch hole in here. I melt it in with a T-pin and a little torch. And uh, I find that's all you need. But if they if they go empty the jars and they're sitting on the colony for long, there's a little daylight that comes in through this hole, and they don't like that daylight coming in through there through through here. Even though it's under a bucket, there's daylight coming in through that hole. They don't like it, and they'll plug that with propolis. So make sure when you come in, you clean your jars out. Uh, they'll start getting a little algae in them, even though they're under a bucket. They'll get a little algae. And I put 
Clorox, little Clorox in them. I let them soak for 24 hours and I rinse them out. And I just usually stack them up. These are all clean jars ready to rock and roll on the floor here. And then I bought, I bought some pints. Uh, I bought two cases of pints for my small two frame boxes. And they had mason jars, quartz on sale. So I picked up two more cases of those. So I should be in fairly good shape with my uh, ball jars for now. And the metal lids that come with them, I usually give them to my buddy Hippie John over here. And I use all plastic. I had Miss Daisy pick me up 24 on Amazon the other day. They weren't expensive at all. So yeah, this is my simple tank. It works great. Uh, that tank's a little warm. What's nice about this, Martin gave me this tank. It's clear. You can see the liquid in it. So keep that in mind. This came from Rural King, this, this, uh, this deal. As you can see, Rural King. And it worked out. It worked out. I think this is, I think this is 30 gallon, I think. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's working out fine. This will be all the size I need for my small operation. I don't need nothing bigger than this. And uh, so it's a cool way to do it. Once you guys get up to 15, say 15, 20 hives, mixing this stuff by hand in a five gallon bucket is a pain. Trust me, it's a pain. All I did to hold this against, this thing was to stiffen this up. All I did was melt two holes through here. I bored this hole uh, inch and a quarter hole to pass my piping through. I didn't seal it up here. I said, well, if it gets to be an issue with ants, but they can still come in through here or wherever. The main thing is try to control your ants from the outside. You won't have to worry about it. But I, all I did here, I put a zip tie right here, you can see. And that's all that was necessary. I can actually turn this can almost upside down. I have to kind of rinse it out. Uh, you will get a little dust here on the inside. Just take a paper towel, take a paper towel and wipe it out. Or after a few runs of syrup, you can take it and run it completely out. And what I did to do that, I had about that much left in the bottom. I dumped it in my, that's my old feed tank there. And see, it's got a valve on it too, where I can just gravity feed it out. But I dump the remainder in there. Then you can take this out, spray it down with Clorox bleach, rinse it out really well, and get it ready for your next run of syrup. Okay, let's get out here, get the zoot suit on. I got to get a full suit on because I'm, I'm going to be ripping, tearing into beehives. I'm, I'm not going to be all that gentle uh, and easy going to get it like I do with my little two framers. So I'm, the two framers and, and light bee work, I use a just a light veil but with what I'm gonna do now it's gonna need a full suit uh, they should be fine the bees shouldn't be too ugly today but still I don't need to take I took a quite a bit of hammering the other day and so I think I'm up to snuff on my bee venom therapy with that so I'm gonna put a suit on I'm gonna take my little pump sprayer right there because I'm stripping down to my skivvies I know that's a, that's too much information for you I know but I'm stripping down to my undies and getting in that ventilated bee suit. And then I can take that sprayer, fill it with I about halfway full of ice, top it out with agua, and I can occasionally spray myself down. And yes, keep from uh, having a heat stroke. Okay, guys, something else I like to do here. Here's a... 100% tea tree oil. I, I like to add about 10 drops to this Every time I fill this up I add about 10 drops. It, it helps so they say to uh, cut down on uh, Wimmy diddles Keep your Wimmy diddles in check, okay? Okay guys, let's see what's going on with this one. This is at the furthest This colony here is at the furthest south end of the Site here. I'm just doing a quick evaluation, see what kind of resources we might have to deal with, you know. 
this. I may want to come over here and rob some, you know. Okay, I see some black bees. I see some yellow bees. So we got a bunch of Florida mutts here. Florida mutts. Well, we got a pretty good queen here, guys. This thing's stacked three high. Some honey. They're not hurting for food, that's for darn sure. No, sir, they're not hurting for food whatsoever here. Let's go downstairs and see what our egg supply is. Well, they've got elbow room, as you can see. That one's not filled out. There's a little bit of honey and pollen here. Honey and pollen. Start of a start of a peanut, but nothing's in it. Yeah, there's larva and stuff here. Yeah, there's some larva there. Kind of old larva though. I'm actually looking. I'm actually looking for some eggs and stuff. Now this one here will work good. This one right here will work good for putting in a die out, or uh, for putting in one of our five five frame startups. Yeah, there's a lot of resources here. I'm gonna leave that one out and put it in the very bottom. Let's see what's in this very bottom here, guys. I don't think this queen is very, is, I don't think this queen is that old very old guys I think I made her started making her in February you know, there's nothing going on down here she kind of built this hive they kind of built this hive in reverse boy there's a really nice pollen frame right there guys but there's no eggs down here. I lied to you, and there she is right there, guys. There's Mama right there. She's been putting in some eggs in here. Yeah, she's a newer queen. Give her plenty of room down here.
Okay. I'm gonna put this honey box right here. She's got plenty of room to work down there and here. And so this one here, see, what we can do with this is I'm going around here. We can come back to this colony. We can come back to this colony and rob some stuff right here off this top one without having to dig down in here. Okay. Okay, guys, I put on here a queen, queen right 6.5. I'm just going to go through all these colonies today. I'm feeling my... I feel like I have a little piss and vinegar today, guys. Uh, what's going on, speaking of piss and vinegar? Look at this. Look at this, guys. One of Steve-O's pineapples. This little small patch of pineapples usually gives me about 15 every year. There's one there. Another month or so, we'll have pineapples. Oh, heck, I had them going all the way to September last season. Look at there. I don't know. I don't see them busting out all over the place crazy yet, though. There's one. It's kind of like a little Easter egg hunt. There's one there. Yeah, I don't eat a lot of them things. Too much sugar, and if you get too much sugar in you, you'll start getting a little goofy like uh, Nasty Nancy and Joe. Okay, be careful of that, all right? All right, what do we got over here? Just check this little girl right here. She's fairly new. And I put Requeen on her before, but I think she was just a little slow in startup, so I'm going to put... The, Queen right uh, six five today. She has syrup, so we're done. We're done with her for a while. I'm just going to go through every flipping hive in this place, guys. Every hive to see where we're at. Anything that's death and dying, okay. We'll kind of look it over and see why do we have death and dying. I got a lot of new girls happening in here too. Uh, yeah, quite a few new girls. I think I got a uh, I got with this one on the end boy. I checked it yesterday. It's really fat and you talk about a honey producer My god, that thing is just packed out uh, But she's blowing out to that medium up top Which really sucks because I don't want she has loaded that thing with seal brood wall-to-wall -wall, top to bottom and that sucks because I, I need I need that stuff for for equipment, uh, beep equipment. I'm trying to phase them out slowly but surely, but if I find a weak hive, I can usually just throw a whole, throw a whole bundle of, you know, throw the whole box on if need be to pump up that colony. But anyway, I'm just gonna keep going through them, guys, and see what I got, and, and I'll keep uh, tapping the camera occasionally and show you what I'm doing. Wow, guys. Wow. This girl is exceptional here. Absolutely exceptional. And there's a frame right there. It's just blasted full of eggs and uh, just hatched larva. Now she's, she slapped honey on this side. And everything over here from there to that wall. And... She may have eggs on this one, but from there over, solid slapped honey. All right. This is something we can rob from. And I may be doing that, coming right back over here and robbing some. If I, if I got a dead colony over here, we're going to rob some resources to take to another uh, our other job site. Yes, sir. So, I'm just going to put Queen right on here. 
Queen Ride 65. This is just quick, easy, quick, easy uh, record keeping, guys. Nothing, no rocket science here. It changes, you know, and it's so easy. It, you might as well figure out to do something easy because these colonies are constantly changing, you know. Uh, you could get in here and accidentally roll a queen. Yet you put her in shutdown mode. Now they're in, in uh, super, you know, they're making uh, emergency cells. And then she goes on her mating flight and gets ate by a bluebird or a dragonfly. Then then this hive's history. So as I go through, it's, it's really nice to just be able to come along here like so. This is our next one we're going to check. I have here a check on, on 530. So this this colony here is dead. I can tell you right now, this colony is dead. So what we're gonna do with these resources, hopefully we don't have a bunch of wax mold issues here. Well, hell, let's just open it up and see. This is our next one in line. We have a few bees in here. We have a few bees in here, and we got a little bit of honey resources. That's excellent. What do we got over on this wall? A lot of pollen. See, if you keep an eye on your bees, see, here's a, here's a high beetle. We don't like him. So this one's going to get a beetle barn, okay? Here's a nice frame of pollen, okay? Nice frame of pollen. There's nothing here. A little bit of honey on this one, so let's rob this one out. Let's shut this door on this thing. I'll tell you what, let's not shut this door on this thing. We got a lot of field force out right now. So let's just diddy bop. Let's just diddy bop right over here where we just came from. And we want to make darn sure we don't grab our queen, guys. Okay. Let's not be brain farting and, and stealing a queen out of here, okay? Let's leave all the brain. Let's leave all the brain farting up to uh, nasty, nasty and Joe. Okay. And uh, yeah, here's a nice frame of eggs. Okay, larva eggs. And what I'd like to do is pump this box up really well here. And a lot of these bees are going to fly back to this colony, but that's all right. Make sure we don't have a queen on this thing. Otherwise, we're kind of defeating our purpose here. All right. We see no queen. Okay. Insert. Let's get some. Let's get some brood, guys. Look at this. Look at this, guys. Are you loving it, guys? Are you loving it? Okay. Are you loving it? This is going to be a walk-away split, guys. I think there's enough bees over here because you've got you've got nurse bees all over that thing I just put in there. All right. I see no I see no queenie. I see no queenie on here. But this is a nice sheet of brood. This is excellent. Okay. We've got this little bit of resources here. Now today's six five, right? I'm gonna set this one right in the center. I'm not gonna rob. They probably got plenty more resources down here, but I'm not gonna choke this chicken anymore right here. I'm gonna leave it alone. All right? You got to be real careful, guys, of how much you want to choke your chicken. You know? I know that was totally unnecessary, Steve. -o. I'm going to put this one right center here. There you go, girls. 
Aren't you happy now? It wouldn't it wouldn't do any good girls to get mad at Steve-O for what I just did because I have a full bee suit on. They can't hurt me. All right, that's that, guys. What do we got now, guys? We got a we got a startup right here. I'm gonna just scribble this out. I'm gonna swap the heads here. When you start getting when you start getting your lids all marked up with all this garbage on them, right? Uh, just take a little four-inch roller and some white paint and go over there and roll it out. So we want to check this colony on seven. It's got a little moisture on the lid. Uh, we want to, the today's six five, so we want to come in here and check on seven five. Do not touch this colony for one month. We have food here, syrup, and bada bing, they will start making a queen. We have all that field force here. Yes. All right, let's move along. All righty guys, what have I got here? Gary, I've got some of your goodies here. I think you can cut down on the oil though. See how much oil guys is on that? I think Gary you can cut back on your oil a little bit because this should absorb. This this is oregano. Oregano and vegetable oil guys, what we have here. Okay. And Gary's saying telling me that it has excellent results. You see how much I've got on me guys? I got a lot on me. I'm just going to paint my clothes with it. Yeah. You know something else I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to put a beetle barn in here. We'll put one of them in. One of them in. What's nice about the Stevo's pallet hives you can see this a pallet hive. Different thicknesses inside. The interior is all equal, of course, because you're you're nailing up against this two by eight down here, which is actually a seven and a quarter across here. All right. But you can see here, you have enough room. A regular standard data data hive. These are hard to get in. Matter of fact, I've had some of the lids pooched up a little bit. But with the Stevo hive, they fit in there because I'm down three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch here. I'm actually just cutting half the thickness of this two by eight, as you see here. Okay. If you ever need dimensions of these, uh, just let me know. Yeah, let me know. Queen right, six, five. Simple stuff, guys, simple stuff for a simple beekeeper, simple-minded beekeeper, okay? If you don't want to confuse me. Uh, although I don't eat a lot of ice cream, I don't eat any ice cream like and cake like Nancy and Joe does, so I'm not that confused, guys, all right? Uh, I got confused. Miss Daisy got confused when I handed her the gas bill. Yeah, it's just I don't know when are we when are we going to be eight dollars a gallon, guys. Eight dollars a gallon. There's no stopping these psychos running this country right now. Uh, they keep talking. They keep talking this global warming. Yeah, right. Okay. You can play the global warming game all you want to. How about cleaning up the environment? We talked about manatees the other day. You know, I, I think of this stuff, guys. My, my mind's working overtime when I'm out here floating amongst the bees because they're so busy, you know. The bees are busy. So old Steve-O's mind gets busy, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's amazing, guys. They're taking a situation that's been happening for billions of years, right? How long has this planet been here? 
without us on it, okay? And it's, what is it, what has it done? It's heated and it's cooled, it's heated and it's cooled. Uh, we've been through how many ice ages? That's proven fact. They've done the borings into the ice sheets and this and that. So, oh, let's freak out. The polar bears are running out of uh, sea ice. Um, penguins are having an issue. Let me tell you something, guys. These, these critters have been going through the same issues forever, just like human beings have, okay? So you don't need to be a rocket scientist for this one. But we, can, we need to stop playing the silly games that these people are playing. So they're taking this crisis. I don't doubt the planet's warming a little bit. I don't doubt that at, at all. I'm sitting out here in a bee suit, uh, you know, trying to melt. That's why I have my little jug of ice water. I don't want to stroke out here, right? So yeah, you just, you just deal with it, okay? And if we all check out, we check out. But this nonsense of just jacking up the gas price because, oh, we're putting a little bit too much uh, cow farts. That's the other one, cow farts in the air and uh, carbon emissions in the air, right? How about planting some more cannabis? How about planting some more trees that makes, uh, you know, to help scrub the environment? Yeah, uh-huh. We don't want to do that now, do we? No, we're going to just cut everybody, just jack up gas prices making everybody think they're going to convert to electric. Well, that ain't happening, guys. That ain't happening. Unless you can get the prices of electric down to about nothingness, okay? But what does it take when you plug the thing into the wall? Where, where do they think that power is coming from? It's coming from a power plant that they're using fossil fuels with to turn the turbines, okay? To turn the generators. So where, where they think they're coming off with well, all this stupid, I, I don't know. You know, we have to vote accordingly and vote these numb nuts out, guys, and get this economy back into Trump, uh, Trump economy, not uh, Biden dump economy, okay? We don't want the Biden dump. We want the Trump uh, winner, winner scenario, okay? And that's what we're going to get. So we're going to have to fire everybody and start from scratch, okay? Yes, yes, we are. And we have to roll up our sleeves and get out here, get out here with old Steve-O and start working the beehives, okay? In thousand degree heat. All right, guys, let's keep, let's stop with it. Let's stop with the high blood pressure uh, uh, building scenarios and get back into bees. We got, a, we got a long way to go. I, you know, sometimes I like to BS too much and and my, and my work suffers, see? I've got to get into all these colonies here. So we're already doing some good here. We've made one, had a failure. So which what you do, every month you wanna do this, guys. Every month, stroll down through memory lane here and check all your bugs. And you can do it, if you run a, if you run a hive like I do, a lot, of, a lot of people make a big mystery out of this and they want to buy those internal feeders and all that. Well, we put an internal feeder in a five-frame box. Okay, you eat up two frames out of there. Bore a hole in the top and put your jar in there. That way you can come over here and play peekaboo, and you can see if this colony's fat or getting skinny. If it's getting skinny, get in there and find out why it's getting skinny. All right? Okay, that's enough preaching from...